What's up guys? Today's video is going to be a buyer's guide. So if you're in the market for a second generation MR2, this is the video for you. I'm gonna go over some key things to look at if you're going to buy one of these cars. So we'll go over the body, suspension, mechanical stuff, and interior. I have two MR2s, so we're gonna spend most of our time looking at this car because it's stock, but we will also look at this car a little bit because there are some things that are easier to access. Before I get too far into this video, I do wanna make a quick disclaimer. This video will not be all inclusive and the reasoning is pretty simple. MR2s tend to be modified a lot, so it's hard to account for each variable. But the things I'm gonna give you are key things that are typical issues to watch out for for each MR2. In addition, I'll give you guys some general things that will honestly apply to any car you look at. In addition, I'd highly recommend you do some additional research because depending on your market, you could have gotten something different. For example, the 93 MR2 turbos in America got bigger brakes. And if I recall correctly, the Japanese models all had bigger brakes if they were turbo. Swaps are very common on these cars. So I did want to mention the fact that if you check the frunk, that will tell you what type of car it is. The SW21 tells me this is a NA chassis. If it said SW20, that would tell me I have a turbo chassis. Let's start with the body now. These are old cars, so I would tell you to check for bad paint work and to see if it's been crashed. An easy way to see if it's been crashed is by checking the body lines. For example, this car here does not have equal body lines. You can even see where it touches there. Just as an example, you can see on my other MR2, the body lines seem to be pretty equal. The gap is a little bit bigger on the other side, but it's not as bad and that could just be misalignment due to years of use. The paint is a big giveaway if it's been painted. It's very hard to match the body paint. So you can see here, there's actually a difference. This is very white. This is more of like a cream color. I hope the camera picks up the difference. Here on the front is a more drastic difference. This is like a gray, while this is white. So because these are older cars, the odds of them being painted are significantly higher than a newer car. It's okay if it's been painted as long as it's been done right. For example, it's pretty common on a cheap paint job to not paint the door jams. This MR2 is a good example of a bad paint job. This is in the door jam. You can see the old color and then the new color. So if you're trying to get a pristine model, definitely be cautious of the paint. That teal car there is used for racing, so the fact that the paint sucks is not a big deal to me. I have found probably four key areas that I typically see rust on MR2s. That is the frunk, the windshield area, the rocker panels, and then the trunk. We'll go show you each of those areas right now. So this is the frunk of my car, and as you can see, there is rust everywhere. I'm going to be careful because I don't want to get a tetanus shot, but this here, I can literally push and poke a hole in it if I wanted to. It's that thin. In addition, because these are old cars, the weather stripping around the windshield tends to deteriorate and rust happens. You definitely wanna be careful with that rust around the windshield area because it could look like minor surface rust, but then once you get in there, it could be pretty cancerous. Next area we will talk about is the rocker panels. Under this vent and in this area, the car tends to rust. To take off the vent, there's actually some bolts here in this wheel well. There is also some screws under this trim here. In addition, under this trim, there's actually a cavity which has this foam filled in there. That foam was actually put in from the factory, but people have found over time, if the foam is left in, it can actually help cause rust. So if you're looking at one of these cars, ask them if they have taken the foam out that's behind this vent. The last area you need to be careful for is the trunk. My apologies if the lighting is not too good, but you got the trunk liner. You wanna take this out and then check below it because there tends to be rust. As you can actually see here, there is bubbling and that's rust. The next thing we're gonna hit on is the suspension. 
Fortunately, the suspension on these cars are very simple. The big thing to consider is what year do you want to get? The 91 to 92 MR2s had suspension, which made it more tail happy. The 93 plus MR2s had revisions made, so the car would not be as tail happy. Now, when you're under the car, you want to check things like, are the bushings in good shape? Because the bushings, for example, for the tie rod on here tend to be bad. Um, up there, you got things like the end link. You got the lower control arm here, which attaches to the subframe. And then over there to the chassis, it's way back there. Are the ball joints good? Because these do tend to rip over time. If you're under the car, also check how much oil is leaking. These are old cars now, so it's fair to say they're going to leak oil. In addition, check for the under trays. They are all along the body and go to the front. Those under trays do tend to break and or go missing a lot on these cars. So if you need to get one, you typically have to buy them used because to my knowledge, at least at the time of making this video, no company offers them new. Anyways, getting back to the suspension. As I've said before, they are really simple on this car. You just pretty much, you check bushings, end links, are the shocks leaking? Are the boots on them still good? Things of that nature. Oh, also the top hats, very important because if they go bad, you get a lot of clunking. The one thing I will touch on real quick is snap oversteer. When people think of MR2s, that's one of the first things that come to mind. The reality is it's actually lift off oversteer. What happens typically is a person will go into a corner too fast they lift on the throttle what that does transfers weight to the front causes the back end to slide out because this car is short wheelbase and has the engine in the back when it starts to slide out it goes very very quick so in the hands of a inexperienced driver you're gonna spin it because you have to be on top of it in order to catch that and just for the record it's okay if you do spin the car i've spun this thing a million times now the key thing though is take it to the track in a safe environment. I would like to also mention I am grossly oversimplifying the suspension characteristics of this car. So if you have any questions, you can um, leave them down in the comments below. Or uh, another resource I would recommend is checking out Alex Wilhelm. I hope I'm saying his name right. I'll link to his website and he has a bunch of stuff on the MR2 suspension. Next thing we'll talk about is the engine compartment. Now it's hard to give exact specifics on what to look for just because depending on the country you're in, you got a different engine. For example, the United States got the 5 SFE for the NA model and then the turbo model was the 3S GTE. But other places got things like the beams and 3SFE and stuff like that. The big thing I'll tell people is just make sure the car is straight. So does it misfire? How much oil is leaking? These are old cars. How is the maintenance? Is there any proof of it? If you're able to, make sure the car is cold when you start it because if a car has been sitting overnight and you turn it on and you see black smoke come out, that tells you there's an issue. So just to reiterate, most of it is just gonna be making sure whatever engine is in that car is mechanically healthy. The two things I definitely can say to watch out for is if you have a turbo model, they have these hoses called the hose from hell and the hose from hell on earth. They sit right under the turbo and are a pain to replace. So if you're looking for a turbo model, ask the seller if that has been replaced. The other thing I'll mention, which is universal among all MR2s, is the coolant lines that run above the gas tank. The gas tank is actually right beneath this. There's a metal tunnel and the gas tank is in there. Above that gas tank, there's two metal lines that over time deteriorate and then start to leak. If the leaks get bad enough, you can have issues with overheating. A common thing people do is actually just cut that piping and then replace the section that is leaking with um, some radiator hose. Definitely ask the seller if they know if that's been replaced. If not, it's a safe assumption that it leaks because every MR2 I've seen that has not had it replaced leaks. The reason it's such a big deal is you have to remove the gas tank to access it. So it's a very tedious job to take care of. Last thing we're gonna look at is the interior of the car. As you guys can see, the interior of these cars are pretty Spartan. What I mean by that is that they're very basic, which is a good thing in my opinion. To start off, just make sure your gauges work. I've commonly seen the RPM gauge and the speedometer not work properly. 
every MR2 I've been in as well does not read accurately for the gas gauge. Now, most MR2s have aftermarket head units. Mine doesn't just because it's so stock, I wanna keep it that way. But I did switch this out for a USB port. Um, most of the power outlets on these cars honestly have broken by this time. Uh, so they tend to get switched out for things like this. If you have things like power windows and power locks, right here is where you will see all of those switches. Over here, you have some storage. If you have manual windows like me, here is the crank for that. One thing that's nice about these cars is that they do have storage cubbies behind each seat. One over there. In addition, um, there is a storage cubby that goes right here. I don't have it. Those are primarily seen on turbo cars, at least in the United States. It's actually very common for the center console to be cracked. I primarily see it cracked in this area, which is actually happening on my car. In addition, these dashes tend to actually lift up right over here. I'll give you guys a shot of the outside. It may be a little bit hard to see, but this is actually starting to pop out because the dash is starting to lift up. Now I got one last little tip for you guys. Because these cars have mechanical speedos, it's actually pretty easy to roll back the odometer. So if you actually look at the clutch and brake pedal, that will give you a good idea if that's accurate or not. My apologies ahead of time for the lighting, but you can see here that it's actually very worn and it's even cracked up top compared to this other one, which has been replaced at some point that looks pretty much brand new. Anyways, though, it's definitely a good idea to look at that because if the owner says something like this car has 30,000 original miles and you see those foot pedals are really worn, you know something is up. But just to give you a warning, you can buy those square little pads that go over the clutch and brake pedal brand new. I know Prime MR2 sells them for about 10 bucks a piece. If you end up buying an MR2, you'll definitely need parts. So the three stores I would recommend are Twos R Us, MR2 Heaven, prime mr2 and as a bonus ko racing to be clear i am not sponsored by any of those stores they just make quality mr2 parts and support the community so if you have one definitely buy from those guys anyways i really hope this video helped you and if you have some more specific questions you can leave them down in the comments i will answer them to the best of my ability because i definitely know this was not all inclusive as there's just so many variables when you consider swaps and how each country got different variations. With that being said, you guys have a good day. I'll catch you in the next video.